counting down for me. All right, today, friends, we are going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 12, and it is an exploration lesson. So in the past, usually we would have things where we'd work together as partners and we'd explore different stuff. We're still going to explore. We're just going to do it in a little bit of a different way this year than what we would normally do. But before we get started with that, we are going to start warming up our brains with our quick look cards. So here we have our bell ringers. Ding, 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 ding. Remember the idea of the quick look cards? is that you have three seconds to figure out how many dots you see on each um, tense frame or double tense frame. Sometimes it's a double tense frame. you got to tell me how you saw how many dots it was. So you're going to tell me how many dots you saw and how you got to that answer so quickly. Because we don't want to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We want to do some pattern counting now or things like that. So switching over here to my next screen. Here we go with our quick look cards. You will have three seconds to look. And then I'll call on somebody. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, that was a little bit of a trickier one, but I saw some hands go straight up. All right, so what did you see on that quick look card, and how did you see it? Gwen, what did you see on that quick look card? How did you see it? Okay, first of all, what did you see on that quick look card? Um, How many did you see? A nine and a three. Okay, so if you saw a nine on the left side and three on the right side, how many did you see all together? Twelve. Twelve. Okay, you saw twelve. So you said you counted by fives? Okay, so let me flip the card over here, and you're going to share with us how you counted by fives. You can do it. You can get to it counting by fives, but tell us how you did that. Okay, so so this is how I would have counted it by fives. When I see that there's one missing in the box over here, okay, I know that I have five on one side of the doubles tens frame and five on the other side of the doubles tens frame, right? So I'm going to pretend, and let me see if I can use my pen. I don't know if it lets me use my pen on the toolkit pages. Let me make this smaller, see if I can find a pen. Nope, it doesn't let me do it on the toolkit pages. So I'll just I'll just use my finger. So I'm going to pretend that this dot over here is going to slide into this spot, okay? So it would just magically go broop, so that I would have 10 all together. Then I could count 5, 10. Since that dot's not here anymore, I don't count it anymore. So I would count 5, 10, 11, 12 if I wanted to do it that way. You can do it counting by fives that way. Or you could just recognize that if you have all of the dots on one tens frame, that it would be 10, Jamie. Then you could just say 10, 11, 12. Either way it would work, okay? But right, I'm glad, though, Gwen, that you didn't count all the dots because we want to stay away from counting all the dots. That's the whole idea of this now. All right, going to flip this one back over, maybe. I'm going to flip this one back over. There we go. All right, here we go. We have another one. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, all right. What did we see in that? On that quick look card, what did we see? How did we see it, Valerie? Okay, so you saw 11 all together. Let me flip it over. How did you see 11 all together, Valerie? Because um, there is the tinker dot and there is like three missing dots in the boxes. So if I slide it together, there will be 10 and then there will be one more. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Just like I just did. So Valerie's saying that she noticed on this, this side here, there's three missing. So she's going to pretend that three of the dots just slide over to fill this whole tens frame in. Because if I fill in one whole tens frame, Jamie, how many do I have? 
If I fill in a tens frame, I have how many altogether? Ten, yeah. I have ten. So if I slide three dots over here and fill this up and make it ten, then like Valerie said, I only need to count one more, eleven. So I can count it ten, eleven. All right. One more quick look card. Flipping it back, maybe. Flipping it back, maybe. Flipping it back. There we go. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right, here we go. One more quick look card. Three, two, one, go. Aha. All right. Uh, this time I'm going to stick, stick, stick a person. Let's see if this lucky person can tell us. Alina. All right, Alina, tell us what did you see and how did you see it? Don't forget to unmute yourself first. 13. You saw 13? Okay. Alina says she saw 13 dots. How did you see it, Alina? Fantastic, fantastic. She did the exact same thing that we've been practicing. Wonderful. She recognized that there's two empty spaces, and if we slide it over and we fill up this whole tens frame, Kaden, if we fill up this whole tens frame, I could count it by what? If I fill up the whole tens frame, Kaden, I can count it by 10, right? So I could count it by 10, and then I would only have to count three more. 11, 12, 13. Fantastic job. Woo! All right, I think our brains are burning now. Here we go. Okay, so we've done our quick look cards. Now let me go over here to our math message for this morning. Now, we are not going to turn and talk to a partner, but we can still stop and think about it. So I'm going to have you stop and think about this question. The question is, what does it mean to explore something? So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. Don't raise your hand yet. I want you to actually think about it. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to think. What does it mean to explore something? And then I'll pull six. Okay? So go ahead. 30 seconds. Tell me what you think it means to explore something. Think about it in your brain. Give you about 10 more seconds. Okay, so, oh, Logan's not in here right now, but let me ask. Oh, I can't get that stick out, it's falling out. Valerie, what do you think it means to explore something? Okay, so like so finding something new. Okay, I'll write that here. Finding something new. I'm so glad this pen works. Finding something new. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to add to that? Rosemary, would you like to add to that? Okay, so seeing what something new is like. Okay, so seeing what something new is like. Seeing what something new is like. Okay. What about, oh, guys, not in here right now, but Gwen can tell us. Gwen, do you have an idea? Do you want to add some more to that? Okay, so just kind of like observing. Can I use the word observe? Yeah. So observing, that's a very good like science word, observing what is around you or looking at what's around you. Maybe you've never been there before or it could be a place you've always been to before, but you're actually taking the time to look now and notice what's around you. Because I think sometimes we get so used to the places that we have always been 
that we don't always notice the things that are around us in those places because we've always just been there. I bet you can find new things every single time. I'll call up one more person to see if they have anything that they want to add to that. Um, Kaden, do you want to add anything to what it means to explore something? It means that like when you're traveling and you find something, you look around around it and you and you and you see something. Do you have to travel to explore? So it could mean that you're traveling, and it could mean that you're not traveling, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So may, I'll put in here, maybe you travel to find something new. You don't have to travel, though, to still be able to explore. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we're going to explore today, but we're not traveling anywhere. Yeah. So maybe you travel to find something new. All right. So... Today's lesson is a little bit different because there's a couple of things. Like I said, normally it's an exploration lesson. So normally we would be exploring it with partners together. We can't do it in the same fashion this year, but we can still do some exploring. Now, friends at home, except for Alina. I know, Alina, you don't have these same things at home because today is the first day that you are there. But friends at home, you had some things sent. Your parents had some things sent to their emails a while ago with dominoes and base 10 blocks. And so hopefully you've had an opportunity to print some of those things out because those are things that we would be using today to do our exploring. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to explain to you what our exploration lessons are going to be. And then I'm going to let you explore them on your own too. And before we leave for today's lesson, I am going to go over what tonight's homework is going to be because there will be math homework again tonight. Kudos to all of you last night who did the math homework and you sent a picture to me. That was fantastic. I actually opened up Seesaw at home last night. Believe it or not, I still work when I leave this place. It's amazing. So I did open it up last night and I saw a lot of people's homework right away. I could tell they went home right away and they worked on that homework and that was fantastic. Amy Make Amy sure Mike. you don't just click on the done. Make sure you actually send me a picture of it so that I can see it, okay? Just clicking done, Jamie, isn't going to hand in your homework. You actually have to take a picture of the homework for it to be done, okay? But moving on, I'll explain more about what the homework is supposed to be like when we get to that part. One of the things that we're going to explore today, and I won't go over the rules to explorations, but one of the things that we are going to explore today is we are going to explore base 10 blocks okay now this would be what we would normally explore but i'm actually going to do it in reverse i want to do i want to explain this one second because this is the one i want to spend a little bit more time on because it goes along with tonight's homework the other thing that we would explore today would be our dominoes once i find it we won't do the shaped ones because we don't have enough shapes anyways and we can't share shapes this year okay Oops, it disappeared. There we go. So one of the things that you're going to do, if you have the dominoes at home, fantastic. If you don't have the dominoes at home, hopefully you have a chance that you can print them out today. One of the things that you're going to do is you're going to take dominoes from zero to, in our case here in the classroom, I think it's zero to nine in our bags. It might be one to nine in our bags. But at home, you probably have a lot more dominoes than just that. So what you're going to do and we're going to do this in the classroom too, is you will have your dominoes, okay? In our case, it's in a bag here in the room that we'll keep in our toolkit. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to actually sort them out. Put them in number order from the lowest number, whether it's zero or one, all the way up to the highest number. Now, some of our bags, I think, stop at nine. Some might stop at 10, 11, 12, I'm not sure. Each bag was made at a different time. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Now, you'll notice that there's like a little piece of paper under each one of them. I have little pieces of paper. Imagine that. So at home, you might want to either use little pieces of paper or you could even use your dry erase board. Underneath each domino, as you sort it, you will first of all put the number that you found 
Um, like in this case, here's a number five. They found a number five. I'll try to make this a little bigger so at home you can see it. Oh, maybe not. Oh, come on, make it bigger for me here, buddy. Woo, there we go. Okay, whoa, that's really big. So they found a domino that had five <coughs> dots on it all together. So they put the number five on the card first. Derek sanitized. And then they used the dots on the domino to make an adding problem. So they came up with the adding problem, two plus three. Why did they pick two plus three? Why didn't they put zero plus five or four plus one? Or, well, that's the only other five that I can think of. Why did they pick the two plus three? Any guesses? Rosemary, why did they pick the two plus three? Because it's a little bit harder. Maybe because it's a little bit harder. Can you see this domino right here? Why do we think they picked the two plus three? When, why did they pick two plus three? Because that's what the domino said. Because that's what the domino said. There was two dots on one side and three dots on the other side. So you're going to make it an adding problem or a plus problem or an addition problem, whatever you like to call it, that matches the domino that you have, okay? So if you have two dots on one side and three dots on the other side, then the adding problem that you're going to make is two plus three. Or if you happen to have seven dots on one side and two dots on the other side, then the adding problem you're going to have is going to show seven plus two in a different answer because it wouldn't be five, okay? So you're going to write the number on the card plus the math problem that would match it, the adding problem that would match it. And friends at home, when you do that, and I know, Alina, you don't have the dominoes, but that's okay. But the other friends at home, when you do that, you can take a picture of it and send it to me. You can attach it to our math slide if you want to. Now, that's one activity that we're going to do for our exploring. The other activity, now I'm going to go back to it, maybe, if I can make this go smaller again. Here we go. This is the one I want to spend a little bit more time on because I want to explain it a little bit. We are going to explore our base 10 blocks. So... Let me grab a bag here. Friends, I really, our friend here at school, I really like how those of you who just came in came in so nice and quietly without talking. That was fantastic. Thank you very much. You will earn extra JoJo points for doing that. That is awesome. You came in nice and quietly and just sat down and, and started paying attention to what we were doing. I really appreciate that. Okay. So we will have base 10 blocks. Those that, that used to have these in the classroom, you're familiar with what they look like. Okay. Now, today for our base 10 blocks, you're actually going to build something. Usually we don't play with base 10 blocks because they're math tools and we're using them as tools. But today for our exploring, we're going to actually build a little bit. But what you're going to do, and you'll have another slip of paper to do this with, and you're going to use your own bag of base 10 blocks to make a building. So let me bring up my toolkit here. I can show you on my toolkit how you could do that. Let me find my base 10 blocks here. Base 10 blocks. Okay, so I'm going to pull out a flat. Okay, pull one over here. I'm going to put a couple over here too. And I'm going to pull out some longs. I'll just pull some random ones out here. One, two, three, four, five. That looks good. And then I'm going to pull out some cubes. Here's a cube right here. I'm going to stick this one up in the corner for a reason. And then I'm going to just pull a bunch out here. Okay. So before we get started, I want to help us remember, because we haven't really used the base 10 cubes that much, or the base 10 blocks that much yet this year. I want to see if we can remember what each block equals. So let me start with my little cube right here. How much does a cube equal? And if you have them in the classroom, they look like this. That's this little cube. Woo, nice and close. How much does this cube equal? One cube would equal what, Angelina? Just one, right? Now, 
that would be this right here. Now, now I would have a long would be the next one that I want to look at. If I have a long, how much does a long equal, Valerie? Ten. It equals 10. It would be like if I took 10 of these little cubes and I stacked them all to, on top of each other, um, right? Mm -hmm. So this would be a one and this would be a 10. Now, if I had a flat, which is what we call this square looking thing, if I had a flat, how much would that equal? Or how much does a flat equal, Jose? 100. 100, right. It would be like if I had 10 of these stacked together, going across a bit, 10 along. Or, Logan, we're listening right now. Or it would be like having 100 of these little cubes all pushed together. So a cube is 1, a flat is 10, and I'm sorry, may back up, choo-choo, back up train. A cube is 1, a long is 10, and a flat is 100. So in a minute we will explore and we will make something. So I'm going to make a building with, let's see, 1, 2, three longs, okay? That's gonna be like my Door. my base of the building. Um, it's a weird shaped building. It's gonna just be strange. And then <clears throat> I'm actually gonna take another long and I can turn it around. Boop! Oh, I didn't wanna turn it around that way. All right, let me try to put that back together. Oh, it won't let me put it back together, that's okay. I'm gonna take another long and I'm gonna set it here I'm going to pretend that they're standing up. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a cube. I'm going to put it here and another cube. And I'm going to put another cube here and another cube here. Okay. And now I've made like a random building. Friends at home, I know it might be a little bit difficult for you to see, but I have used one, two, three longs. And I have used one, two, three, four cubes. Now, after you spend a little time making a building out of your base 10 block, you'll have another one of these lovely pieces of scrap paper. You're going to have to tell me how many blocks you have all together. How much does your building equal all together? Now, I could spend time touching each little block, right? Mm -hmm. I could. But let me tell you something. If I'm going to use my flats, it's going to take me a long time to count 100 over and over and over again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So instead of just counting it one little block at a time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I could count this by saying 100. Or I could count this by saying 10. Or I could count this by saying one, right? So now I would figure out how many do I have all together in the building that I've made. So let's count the building that I've made. Now, I always want to start with my biggest number first. So in this case, I have longs and cubes. Which one is going to have my biggest number first, the longs or the cubes, Levi? The longs. The longs, right? So, and I would count those longs by how much, Kaden? Ten. So let's count the tens together. Ten. Oh, oh, I'll wait till I see everybody's eyes are up here. I appreciate those of you at home that are looking. Let's count them again. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Okay, now I've counted my longs. Now I have to go to cubes. When I count my cubes, how much do I count those by? Jamie. Ones, right. So I have 10, 20, 30. Now I have 31, 32, 33, 34. So how much does my building equal altogether? It would equal 34. Okay, it would equal 34. So I would show that with my on my piece of paper. I would have the number 34 written next to my building. Okay? So you're going to explore some dominoes. Show adding problems with the dominoes after you put them in order, and then we're going to build with our buildings and show how many we have for our buildings. Yes. Now, that takes us into our homework for tonight, and I know I'm just kind of blowing through this, but 
the exploration lesson, because we have to do it differently and we're not doing it with partners, we're just going to do it independently. I don't want to sit here and just kind of wait while everybody explores. We can all explore in our own time after we get this part done. So let me show you what our homework will be for tonight. Tonight's homework will be home link 112. Everybody has their home link book at home. So it shouldn't be a problem to find it. Mm, skipping, 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 skipping. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Let me see if I can find the printable page. Nope, that's not the printable page. This is the printable page. Okay. So it will look like this, home link 112. And at the top, there's always a little note. This is what we did today. We explored our base 10 blocks. So they actually give you a picture right here of a building that was made using some base 10 blocks. Levi, that's not making a good choice. That's lit. So if you're sitting in your seat, you won't slip. Take your hood off. So, and it also tells you that a cube equals 1, a long equals 10, and a flat equals 100. So that you don't have to count every single little block because... I think it would be hard to count this first thing because you don't even see all of the blocks. But it's a flat. Even though we can't see all of it, we know that it's a flat and that it equals 100, right? So it has some flats and some longs and some cubes that you need to count. So that would be the first part that you would do as you would count how many blocks there are all together and write it in the space on the, on the line next to the words. Then, this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. Now you have to use words and tell me how you counted the blocks. So you will use words in writing with your pencil. You will tell me what did you do. I started with the maybe flat or I started with the Cubes. Hopefully you don't start with the cubes because that would be a lot of counting. Or I counted this first or I counted that first, okay? So you will count how many there are all together. Write it on the line and then you will tell me how you counted how many there are all together. Are there any questions? Logan. Um, what are the, how much is the big cube one? We're not worried about the big cube right now. We're only worried about the flats, the longs, and the small cubes. Any questions? So because that's homework, remember friends, it won't come out until later at the end of the day when you leave here, 3.40. Then it gets sent to you. So when you get home, you'll have to open up your seesaw and find it, take a picture of it, send it back to me with the picture, okay? All right, any questions of friends at home? Yes, no, maybe so, any questions? Yes, Yunessa, do you have a question? I'm sorry, honey, I couldn't hear all of that because your iPad was moving. Oh, uh, well, um, I don't know what to tell you because I know I emailed mom some stuff to print out at the beginning of the year, so maybe she can print them out real quick. I'm not sure, okay? I don't have base 10 blocks. I don't have enough to actually send home to give to people. That's why I sent them out as printable. All right, so we'll have to figure something out for I that. I know Alina doesn't have them because Alina normally isn't at home with them, okay? Um, any other questions before we get started on what we're doing? Nope. Now, friends at home, remember, too, we need to do some extra math today, okay? Make sure you're doing extra math. Everybody can do that at home. And friends in here, we're going to make sure we do our spring math today, too. So we're going to have make sure we have time with that. All right, friends at home, I'm going to send you on your merry way. Okay, make sure you get the homework done later this afternoon. And you don't forget to do your extra math. I'll see you later for closing circle. And my friends in here, we are going to get started on our document.